Other kids, it is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with a vlog because uh, it's also going to be on my phone because my webcam decided to shit the bed again. Yay! So, uh, that said, I have the list that I'm going to be taking it from right here. And, yeah, <laughs> this is the discussion video about gun control that I meant to do. But, uh, it took a while because the first time it didn't feel good to me, and then the second time, uh, <laughs> I have not had enough time to do it. And it also happened on a particular day that was really bad for me to be releasing a video on that. Or at least I felt it would be not contributing anything meaningful to the discussion, especially considering how badly I did it the first time. So uh, I'm hoping this time it actually works out. So, here we go. Alright, there was a list from a uh, particular Tumblr user, I know, um, named Regine Inferos, I believe I'm probably butchering the fuck out of that name. Uh, I guess I'll be linking it in the description down below, you guys can read it for yourself. Um, anyway, uh, what I would do uh, to, or at least propose to directly and effectively make society safer for gun control. Uh, a lot of their points I don't necessarily agree with, but I do agree with the majority of them. Uh, a lot of them are very good things we could be starting off with, but we don't seem to be doing that, and it's very simple to me. Um, I'll be trying to give my commentary on these points, but some of them may not have any commentary I can make, mainly because they're pretty good or pretty bad, depending on which one I'm looking at. <laughs> anyway, uh, first one, absolutely get rid of all AR-15s and the like. Um, that one I disagree with, because I'm one of those few people who thinks we do not need to ban weapons to be able to make society safer. That's just me. Um, that said, um, <laughs> there should be a limit on how you are able to carry those weapons. Uh, I do not think they should be open carried, uh, ever, really. Uh, if you're going to have to carry them out in public, I would prefer you have them in a carrying case or in your vehicle. In fact, your vehicle would probably be the perfect spot for it. Um, mainly because a high-powered weapon, it's not necessarily, you know, a, you know, weapon of mass destruction or anything like that. I know that. Uh, it's a semi-automatic weapon. It's going to have a decent fire rate. Um, there's no particular need for a round that powerful to be easily carried around on you, I think. I think most pistol rounds are more than enough for self-defense and, uh, Possibly the defense of other people if you need to. I do not necessarily think a uh, high-powered rifle or decently powered rifle in the case of, well, two, two, three rounds in particular, uh, it does not need to be you know, open carried like that. Uh, now, like I said, if it's in your car and you have to pull it out in a particular emergency, at least it is in the car. But I honestly think if you're carrying a gun on you already, there is no need to be carrying around a large rifle like that. That's just my opinion. It seems a little excessive. And it very much is, to be perfectly honest. Um, as I said, you do not need to ban it. Just need to limit the ways you can carry it around. Like I said, open carry for a long rifle is pretty ridiculous. Uh, if you have it in a carrying case, if you have to walk around with it or have it in your vehicle to move it around, that's fine as far as I'm concerned. But open carrying it like strapped to your back, that's that's kind of ridiculous to me. Uh, but anyway, that point done with. Intense background and criminal background checks on any and anything violent automatically disqualifies you. That I agree with. Uh, however, there are some shady things some cops have done uh, <laughs> that I've heard about from a co-worker. Uh, he apparently had gotten, uh, this is allegedly from his perspective, uh, 
Allegedly, he had been pulled over and arrested for having a particular knife on him. Uh, it, at this time, it was a while ago, a long time ago. And then three years later, he was arrested again for a, uh, I believe it was a domestic dispute, but he was trying to intervene and try and uh, keep things from getting worse. Uh, it was actually between a friend of his and uh, their uh, significant other. I honestly don't remember all the story offhand. Um, but apparently he was trying to intervene. He ended up getting arrested for it, and then they tried to, and succeeded, combine the two charges, which were three years apart, I might add. Uh, I think I already said that, but yeah, three years apart, they tried to combine the charges together, and that ended up giving him a felony charge, which was ridiculous because those two crimes were, like I said, so many years apart, it should not have been valid. But apparently it was. Uh, at least to the uh, judicial system. So, uh, as long as they're not pulling anything like that, I have no problem with criminal background checks or very intense background checks uh, to make sure that they don't have a violent history on their record. Uh, no problem with that at all. Next one is make getting a gun or gun permit more like getting a driver's license. That is actually a very good point, <laughs> because it is, it feels like a lot of people will get into it and not know what the ramifications of having one are, because as much as you might try and say otherwise, it is a tool designed to kill. That is it. But like I said, <laughs> it's not the only one like that. Uh, swords were designed to mainly kill. Uh, knives are a bit of a gray area, depending on their design. Uh, swords, uh, most maces, <laughs> most axes, uh, they are usually designed for killing in mind. Guns are designed for killing in mind. That doesn't mean you can necessarily use it only for that, and getting a driver's license is mainly to make sure that you're qualified to actually do it without harming people, because that is a very dangerous sort of situation to be in when you don't know what you're doing, and you're using a particular thing. Like, in, for a driver's license, a car. You can easily kill people with that, and personally, I think that you should be trained for that sort of thing, like you are with drivers, driver's licenses and cars, to be able to use it effectively when you have to. Now, uh, that would include the permit to learn, includes an exam with 18 or more questions on the policies, laws, and etc. of guns and gun ownership, which uh, 18 to 30, maybe, depending on the state and prevalence of violence in that state, maybe. Uh, I think that would probably be best. Um, if you get more than eight questions incorrect, you must retake it. Depends on the number of questions, if it makes it so it's either 25 or 35 percent of the questions you got wrong, and then you have to retake it. That's fine, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, 30 hours of practical experience at a gun range with a licensed teacher, which you should be doing already if you get a gun, because in the first place, uh, you, unless you shoot it off regularly, you are basically unaware of the recoil of the weapon, the quirks of the weapon that you may have bought secondhand or thirdhand or whatever, if it's used, that applies there. Um, you need to know exactly what you're doing with the thing, so that way you can use it to its most effective, you know, efficiency. <laughs> Bit of a redundant there, but uh, you need to know what you're doing with it if you're going to use it. Otherwise, you're just treating it like a toy, and that is stupid.
Like I said, it's a tool to kill. You need to treat it with that sort of respect. Personally, that's, that's my take on it. Uh, must take a five-hour class on the dangers of guns and how to use them safely, which will then yield a certificate that grants you an ability to take the practical exam and last for one year for the permit, not the, the uh, certificate. Uh, license, rather. Blah, 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 blah. If you don't gain the license within the allotted year, you must retake the class. That I agree with. However, five hour, uh, I think that might do it, but depends really on how thorough and vigorous the class is. Three hours could probably do just as fine. But five is a good maximum to set for it. Uh, I personally think a minimum of three would be fine, but that's just me. Um, yeah, and then the uh, that basically plays into the driver's license thing. That's basically like the learner's permit. And then you can do the, you know, whole exam, and then that whole thing gets done and over with, and then you have the certificate right there, and then you can choose to get guns whatever sort of guns that you trained with when you were getting the exam done. And that should last for maybe the same time as a driver's license, eight years, maybe ten. Who knows? I, I would personally say ten, because that makes it easier to do. But then again, eight would also work, because you could also time it with your driver's license being renewed, and then you can just continue to do that at the same time. But that's just me. That's just me. Um, a practical exam with a licensed instructor, instructor. <laughs> I'm starting to break down a little bit here, uh, who will grade you on various skills. If you pass, you may be granted a permit on the weapon of your choice. The exams may defer on the type of firearm you want. That also, I think, would play into the five-hour class. I think that's really a conjoined point, but it's not a bad point. I like it. Uh, follow the Japanese model, where you must have two gun safes in different areas of the home, one to store the gun and one to store the bullets, and you must provide police with information on where those safes are. Two gun safes is a little excessive, personally. Uh, if you're having the gun, you might as well have the ammo in the same safe. However, I don't disagree with giving the police that info if they're entering the home. I don't think you need to give that info uh, outside of them not going into the house. <laughs> but uh, if they end up having to go into the house for whatever reason, you might as well tell them where it is. That way there's no altercations and nothing goes and escalates and fucks up, personally. That's my opinion. <laughs> so, that... Uh, Two gun safes, like I said, not necessarily good, but uh, providing the police with the information on that should they have to go into the home, fine. That's fine with me. Uh, no concealed carry and only handguns may be allowed to be out in public. Uh, the handguns I will agree with, uh, mainly because, I, like I said earlier, you don't necessarily need to have a long rifle on you, but, uh, concealed carry, that's a bit of an if. It provides, at least most people, peace of mind without having to show off to the world, you know, no, that's not the right way I should phrase that. I think if you're going to have to concealed carry, you're better off not letting the people who would do harm know that you're carrying. So that way you can deal with them in a quick and efficient manner while they're trying to pull shit. <laughs> uh, that's a weird way to phrase it. But, uh, yeah, that's basically what I think about it. Uh, concealed carry is okay in certain situations. Um, if there's absolutely no way around having a gun on you, then concealed carry should be fine. Uh, mainly because, you know, certain areas do not want guns out in the open. That's fine. That's the establish, you know, that's what the establishment wants. You can abide by that. But 
concealed carry should be allowed, I personally think. I would not do that myself, mainly because, or at least not much so myself, mainly because I would prefer to have those who are either averse to guns or those who would want to try and do something in a given area to know that I at least have a gun on me. I would prefer they at least know that so that might deter them from actually doing it. Or if they're averse to guns, they can at least leave and feel safe themselves if they want to. I don't know why they wouldn't want to, but it's whatever. Because uh, I'm one of those uh, <laughs> one of those dorks who go by a particular ideology of one man sword keeps another in its sheath. So, yeah, <laughs> that's personally my opinion on that. If transporting a weapon, it must be in the trunk of a vehicle, in a bag, or some other case. Safety on and unloaded, and may not leave the vehicle until you are at the destination. It doesn't necessarily need to be unloaded, in my opinion. Um, but in the trunk of the vehicle, or, you know, on the little rack in the truck that some people love to put the shotgun in, you know. All them scooters and all that, yeah, all that, uh whatever, <laughs> wherever they put that, uh, in the vehicle, that would be fine, uh, unloaded, not necessarily, in a case or some, in a bag, whatever, not necessarily that way either, but hey, um, yeah, that works out fine for me, uh, that's a decent point in my opinion. If you're a hunter or some other gun hobbyist that requires a functional weapon other than a handgun, then the gun must stay on the premises, whether that is a gun range or the fish and wildlife facility. I personally don't have any things against that particular one. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's a good enough point on its own. Okay, uh, next one was, if you live in a rural area where police and people, for that matter, are few and far between, something akin to a deer hunting rifle should provide plenty of protection from predators and poachers, you still have to follow the aforementioned steps. Uh, that decent point, but at the same time, it may not be enough. Most, uh, <laughs> the main point of a semi-automatic is a faster firing rate. Where as long as you're pulling the trigger fast enough, it'll go. Um, a bolt action, you have to do the whole mechanism to get it to go in the next one. And if you have to defend yourself in a situation where a large animal or, you know, a group of people, most not likely out of all of them, but uh, in that sort of situation, that just would not be fast enough doing that over and over again, unless you're really trained for it, and that takes a fuck ton of time. Uh, personally, I do think that their point on there is a little out there. Uh, deer hunting rifle, well, I mean, the AR-15 can be used the exact same way. Uh, most rifles of that type can be used the exact same way, as long as they're semi-automatic. So, I don't see that really necessarily being a thing that should be enforced in that regard. Anyway, uh, this their next point is, this doesn't cover everything, but I think it's a good place to start. Yeah, that's pretty true. Like I said, my commentary on it, I don't necessarily think all the points are good. Some points need a little fine-tuning before they're good, but they are actually good first steps, I personally think. But, uh, that's at least me <laughs> in that opinion. I'm not sure if the rest of you feel that way. But this is why I'm putting it on YouTube, <laughs> so I can actually hear some discussion on this. And like the previous video, I'm not going to be hosting vitriol on the channel if you're here just to piss and moan and complain that someone doesn't have an opinion you do and just insult and be a general asshole <laughs> then uh, I'm not gonna stand for it you will be barred from my channel if I have to I would rather the conversation be civil and 
coherent, even though most of my points were semi-not <laughs> at this point, but uh, better than the previous video, trust me. So, uh, yeah, other than that, I would like it to be civil in the discussion in the comments down below, if there is any. And, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that covers everything. So, yeah, let me know what you think, because <laughs> I have no other points to make at this point. And I will see you all in the next video. What